In this video lesson, we look at Hubble redshift, expansion of the universe, and the cosmic scale factor. You'll recall that the light from distant stars and galaxies is redshifted. It's not a Doppler redshift, it's a Hubble or a cosmic redshift, where it's actually the stretching out the expansion of space-time that is stretching out the waveforms and making it larger in wavelength, lower in frequency. Space expands and the wavelength of the radiation increases by an amount delta lambda. Lambda naught is the wavelength of the photons when they're originally emitted. Uh, the Doppler equation delta lambda over lambda naught equals V over C still applies and it applies without, um, without the constraint that V must be much smaller than C since space is expanding here. Think of Z as a measure of the degree of redshift. We'll call it redshift ratio. Since the Big Bang, space is always being stretched. The current stretching is denoted by capital R, the cosmic scale factor. R0 denotes the cosmic scale factor when the electromagnetic radiation of wavelength lambda naught was emitted. So delta lambda over lambda naught is equal to the change in the stretching delta R over R naught. Or another way to write this, the redshift ratio Z equals R over R naught minus one. R again is the cosmic scale factor, a proper time measurement of the stretching of the universe. And this is Hubble redshift as space is expanded. There's the Milky Way and in the black is cosmic event horizon. And that defines the observable universe, the extent of the observable universe for us. At this event horizon and beyond, space is expanding at greater than the speed of light. So any light coming from a celestial object would not be able to make it back to be viewed by us. Type 1a supernovae have been very useful standard candles that we use in measuring the expansion of space. We can study type 1 supernovae up to about a billion parsecs away and know their distances from us quite accurately. Type 1a supernovae can occur in binary star systems where one of the stars is a white dwarf. They could both be white dwarfs. And the bigger white dwarf over a long period of time pulls material from its companion star. This may take hundreds of millions of years. When the white dwarf has accumulated enough mass, when it exceeds the Chandrasekhar limit, about 1.4 solar masses, electron degeneracy pressure can no longer prevent collapse of the white dwarf. Gravity takes over and the white dwarf collapses. The collapse increases the temperature of the core so much that the white dwarf reignites fusion. And this time the fusion process happens all at once, a chain reaction, and we get a supernova, type 1a. Because of its very specific mass, about 1.4 solar masses, the supernova gives off a very consistent power, a consistent luminosity. And that's what makes it very useful as a standard candle. We know its luminosity, we can measure its brightness, and therefore we can determine the distance to that type 1a supernova. By observing the Hubble redshift from these supernovas, it's been observed that the cosmic scale factor R is increasing at an accelerated rate. Prior to these observations first made in 1990s, scientists expected that the mass from all the galaxies and stars would have slowed this expansion rate. There must be some energy form out there that we can't see or haven't yet seen that's feeding this accelerated expansion and scientists coined this term dark energy. The irony is, although the universe's expansion is increasing, the event horizon is decreasing, so we can see less and less of the universe as the, the point where the expansion equals the speed of light uh, draws closer and closer to us. Reviewing main points of this video lesson, we talked about the redshift ratio, Z, and it's a measure of uh, the change in the wavelength of the radiation compared to its original wavelength. Uh, it's also the Doppler shift equation if you're talking about a moving object of speed v. But of course, when, we, when we're talking about the expansion of uh, the universe here, we're talking about expanding space, and that's what's causing the red shift. 
uh, not the moving source. And so we call this Hubble redshift instead of Doppler redshift. We introduced the term cosmic scale factor, R here, a measure of the uh, stretching out of the universe. And we could express the redshift ratio in terms of R. So Z equals R over R naught minus one, where R naught is the scale factor when the light was emitted of wavelength lambda naught. We introduced the term cosmic event horizon, and we talked about how we have evidence using type 1a supernovae that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. And we talked about the term dark energy, the stuff feeding this expansion. We can't see it, and we're not sure what it is. Accelerated expansion also means that the event horizon is going to get smaller, and we're going to be able to see less and less of that bigger and bigger universe. All right, let's try a practice problem. Which one of the following could account for the accelerated expansion of the universe? A, dark matter, B, cosmological redshift, C, dark energy, or D, antimatter? Pause your viewer and try this question. The answer here is dark energy. We're not sure what dark energy is. It's what scientists uh, coin the energy that seems to be feeding the accelerated expansion of the universe. Okay, a bit of a long question here. A distant quasar is detected to have a redshift value of Z equals 5.6. Assuming the quasar was near the cosmic event horizon, then which one of the following best estimates the ratio of the current size of the universe to its size when the quasar emitted photons that were detected? A, 7, B, 1 half, C, Hubble constant over 2, and D, 75%. Pause your viewer and try this question. The redshift value Z equals R over R naught minus 1, and that equals 5.6. So we're, sol we're solving for R divided by R naught. R over R naught is 6.6, .6, about equal to 7. Our answer is A. The cosmic factor now, R, has got to be greater than the cosmic factor when the photons were first emitted, R naught. So we know that uh, it's got to be a factor greater than 1. So B's out, uh, C is a bit of a red herring with the Hubble constant there, and D is also less than 1. Working out the reciprocal, R naught over R, 1 over 6.6, .6, or about 15%. And what that means is uh, the size of the universe when the photons were first emitted uh, was about 15% the size of the universe now.